What is going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Hot Scum. This right here, as you should all know by now, is the podcast where we dive into the deep, dark, murky waters with a plethora of legendary guests. I am, of course, your host, your bachelor of ceremonies, the numero uno scumbag, Rex Ruger. That's R-E triple X. You might also know me as AKA the King of Sleaze, AKA the Hair Metal High Priest, and most importantly, AKA Diamond David Lee Roth Jr. That's right, you're looking at him. The son of glam, the front man for the band. Just smoked a few grams. I got a million fans. I'm your ice cream man. Mr. Wap Bop, Loo Bop, Wap Bam Bam, Shazam, Hot Damn. Woo! I'm feeling good. Of course, everybody in the house, including you all out there, are looking good. For me, that's made possible by. My favorite product, get you some. I highly recommend. Coming to you as always from the Lush Lavender Lounge of Love, where it all goes down. And joined as always by my main man, the Keith Hernandez puppet, who may chime in with a comment or two or a question or two. You just never know. Keith is the big, strong, silent type, but, you know, he talks through me. Uh, This is, of course, the No Frills Podcast. You don't get any frills, but you do get plenty of thrills. And those thrills are, of course, looking at moi. Uh, And you, Keith. I don't want to uh, make it all about me, but I mean, you are looking at the greatest, second greatest front man, I digress, to ever do it. And I am still looking for virtuoso level players for my band, Love Sword. So if you ain't too scared and you want to hit me up and be the backing band behind the man, get at me. Uh, I am still looking for players. Maybe I'll even hit up my guest today, who I am super excited to have on here. Just super excited. Uh, Today we got a legit legend in the house. But then again, when don't we? That's all I can say. When don't we? That being said, uh, let me uh, let me start off by saying here that uh, as of the time of this video, we are at 215 subscribers in a mere eight months in some change. That is phenomenal. I can't thank the people out there enough who are, uh, you know, finding me. Uh, subscribing, watching the uh, episodes, and uh, so glad that there's an audience out there that's enjoying it. But I digress because our guest is here, so we are going to chop it up with him on Pod Scum, and I am excited. Let's do this. Where is he? Where is he? Speezy, there he is. What's is up? Look at us. We made it, man. We, yep. we made it, didn't we, man? Yeah. Did you hear me? I'll tell you what, technology sure doesn't make things very easy. I thought everything was supposed to be easy at this stage of the game. Not so much, huh? No, not really. Christian uh, Christian Speezy Geisler, I think most people would probably know you from Creator. That is no more, of course, man, but a uh, fucking the hell of a run with those guys. Uh, man, just uh, some of the most iconic thrash metal ever made. Uh, catch people up to speed though on currently what you're doing right now. We spoke a little bit offline. Uh, you just filled in doing some base duties for the legendary Overkill. Yes, I did. And how did that go? Oh, uh, so far it's like uh, did he got some family issues? So yeah, I'm a really really close friend to uh, Bobby and and yeah. the rest of the guys. And uh, uh, Bobby was calling me and told me. If I want to be able to fill in for Didi, and sure, it's like uh, when friends need help and you can help them, you have to help them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, 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 so when you go out to tour with them, uh, uh, it, it, is it hard in terms of of you got to learn a bunch of Overkill songs? Then, correct? Uh, it was sixteen songs. Yes, it Jesus. was hard. And what does that take for, a, you know, I am not a musician. So, like, what does that take when someone says says to you, hey, we want to tap you to fill in on bass duty uh, uh, for Didi for a little while. Here's our here's our set list. 
a, a, a guy in your position who's been playing bass and, and playing, you know, thrash metal for a long time, how much, how long does that take you to get those songs, uh, you, you know, down pat? Uh, actually, it, uh, it took me a week. Yeah. What yeah. a show off. Come on, Speezy, you show off. <laughs> a week? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it, uh, it took me a week uh, for the 16 songs. And uh, yeah, then I was driving by a train to the first show. Just did the sound check with the guys. There was no rehearsal, nothing. Nothing's changed right in. Uh, uh, yeah, out of the frying pan into the fire, right? Uh, that's yeah. that's uh, baptism by fire. So, so, so for people out there that don't know, and I'm sure this is documented and out there, though. Uh, um, but uh, uh, what led to your departure from Creator? Was it a mutual thing? Did you just want to go off and do some different things? No, it was a personal issue between the main man and me. Okay. Okay. Fair so, enough. Yeah. But, I mean, still, an incredible run with those guys of, of what? Close to 25 years, right? Yeah, yeah. 20, uh, it was 25 years, yes. Yeah, yeah. And 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 when you look back on the material that you, that, you, know, that you put out uh, with Crater, and obviously there's always this talk about, you know, we have a big four uh, that everybody knows of. But where do you think Creator fits in there? Because I always think that they are just a criminally underrated thrash metal band, though. And, and I mean, just consistency, a lot like Overkill that we just mentioned. Uh, uh, do you think Creator is, is right up there in the pantheon of all those other great thrash metal bands? Hmm. I think so, but yeah. but you're right. It's like uh, most of the time, it's like uh, I think they are underrated. Yeah, maybe, maybe because of they are from Germany. Yeah, yeah. Which which over there in Germany, you guys do have your own big four though. That's not too shabby either. You know, I mean, with destruction oh, and Sodom yeah. and Tankard yeah. and Creator. I mean, you know, pretty amazing. I mean, so so. so uh, uh, you know, a lot gets made sometimes about how difficult playing thrash music and just, you know, uh, at a fast pace is. You, and, I, and I'm somebody that doesn't know a lot about the bass, obviously, but you play with a finger-picking style. Uh, does that make a difference when you're playing the type of metal that you play? Um, I don't know. It's like, uh, actually, uh, yes, I I play with uh, three fingers most of yeah. the time. Yeah. And, uh you know, it's like for me, it's easier. Yeah. At the beginning, I lost so much uh, picks, so they're falling down and again yeah. and again and again. And I was like, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting really sick and tired of this shit. And yeah. so, so, I, so I start uh, to play with the fingers, and uh, and I still, when I play some songs here at home or especially in the studio, I'm using yeah. a pick. Yeah. So it's yeah. like um, there are some parts. They only work with the pick, and there are some parts they only work with the fingers. Yeah, yeah, that's so, fair. Yeah, so it's so, all so for the different sound stuff like this. Now, uh, now talk to me a little bit about uh, what you're currently doing musically. Uh, still doing bonded, correct? Yes, I'm still doing bonded. We are rehearsing right now. We get uh, next week another show, and it's getting well right now so and for people that don't know what is uh, what is bonded bonded is also a german thrash metal band correct yes it's a german thrash metal um band it was built by uh Bernemann and maka from uh, sodom okay like uh, i think in 2000 okay and uh they got two records out and uh like for everyone same situation COVID hits yeah and actually most of the world didn't know uh about bonded by right. now and that they got two records out already and now we're working on it to let the rest of the world know we are exist and what about and what about four? You were also involved with that, which kind of was a little bit of a, of a departure from the thrash metal. That was a little more kind of punk oriented, correct? Yes, it was totally punk or, or, uh, oriented, and um, I'm not in four anymore. Okay, okay. So Ixnay on four, done with four. Yeah. Okay, and uh, uh, um, so so 
when you come into the fall, I want to backpedal for a little bit. What was your upbringing like and how early did you know that metal was going to be your career path? Did you have aspirations of doing anything else? Um, actually I wasn't, uh, I was a light guy before. Okay. So I did lights for, uh, Social Distortion, Jummy Rokuai, uh, Death, Cannibal Corpse, uh, the whole tours down here in from 1992, yeah, to to the end of 90, uh, 94 when I joined Creator. So you were so you were doing like stage lighting for these bands. Yes, I was. Uh, I, um, oh, right. Uh, back then, I was driving a truck. I was building up all the lights. Run the show. After the show, I uh, took down all the lights, packed the truck, and to the next venue. And 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 then and then so so how do you get tapped to join Creator? Is that something that you auditioned for? Did those guys already previously know you? Uh, uh, you know, uh, how did you end up in in, in that band? Oh, uh, we grew up together. So okay. uh, back then. Uh, where I was living with my uh, with my parents uh, across the street, Miller uh, parents were living. Okay. Yeah. So we know each other actually from kindergarten. No kidding, really. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Um, so, so the first creator album that you're on is uh, Cause for Conflict in 1995. Yes. yes. And and and. Uh, Throughout the years, when you're in Creator, what is the creative process like? Uh, uh, is it a collaborative? Is it a collaborative effort, or does like does 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 Millie bring most of the songs and the material into the fold, or does he open that door for you guys to also have input? Uh, actually, ninety percent it's Miller. Yeah. So uh, especially in those days now, uh, with all the computer stuff. Yeah. So it is really easy for. For any musician, if you know a little bit about computers, uh, to programming, the drum, and stuff yeah. like this, and right. then come around uh, um, with demo tapes, um, almost a better sound than all the records be uh, back then. Right. Yeah. I, right. Right. <laughs> like uh, like uh, um, back then, it was like a studio for a uh, hundred, hundred twenty thousand dollar, and uh, now when you listen to a home studio recording the sound is almost better than the back then the hundred thousand dollar record I know. Um, studio i know it's pretty crazy it, it, it's pretty crazy nowadays that people can just make music and not even really be proficient on an instrument it's kind of crazy you know yeah. i mean um so i mean i'm i'm interested so when you first get bit by the music bug who are your earliest influences and how did you get drawn to the bass? You know, I mean, because a lot of times people don't think, especially when they're kids, they don't gravitate to the bass as much because it, it always seems like everybody wants to be the lead guitar guy or they want to be the front man. How do you arrive at the bass as your instrument? Uh, yeah, long story short, uh, of course, uh, Creator uh, exists back then and everybody in our community friendship and uh wants to make music so uh a friend of mine and me we were talking about yeah let's do a, a band together and uh yeah that was cool uh, that was really uh, pretty cool and actually i want to always play uh play the drums oh okay yeah okay. and the day and the day later my friend uh, told me he was like hey i got a dude he wants to join uh um, join the band and I was like, hey, cool. So we are three people right now. Yeah, and he yeah. was like, yeah, but this guy got a drum. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> and I was like, really? <laughs> and uh, now what and, do I do? <laughs> and, uh, uh, and my uncle uh, back then uh, got a bass on his wall. So I asked him, it's like, uh, can I get you a bass? I want to build a band. And that's how I start to play bass. Was a feeling like yeah, great, four strings, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do you remember? And do you remember what you know? As a bass player, are there guys out there uh, who you admire their playing? Like, like who are you? Who who are you fan? Who are you a fan of? Uh, of of their bass playing? Somebody that just makes you say, "Wow, I I I love the way he plays the instrument." Uh, 
number one was always for me John Entwistle. Okay, okay. The late, great yeah. John Entwistle, yes. Yeah, and uh, of course, uh, back then for the age, uh, um, 100% Steve Harris. Sure, sure, yeah. It's like, I think every metal bass player, when you will ask him, they were all following Steve Harris back then. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, I would tend to agree with that. You do hear his name dropped a lot by bass players. He seems to have. He seems to have everybody in the metal community's respect. You know, yeah. he's, he's 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 very well respected and very well revered. So so I'm interested. Those last couple of creator albums that you were on, uh, Enemy of God, Hordes of Chaos, Phantom Antichrist, Gods of Violence. Those last f f uh, the four albums that you were on were just. It really seemed like. I mean, creator was just really in the zone and just you know those albums were just it, it just it, it just felt like creator just kept getting better and better and better and better are there any are, are there any is there any kind of a chance of a reconciliation where you would go back to that band or do you feel like that relationship is completely done um for me it is completely done okay okay fair enough fair enough it's and, like, and it's like uh <clears throat> uh i'm I'm still seeing Vento. And, okay. Uh, when they rehearse in Essen, I talk to Sammy and uh, <clears throat> I talk to Frederick, but uh, there's one person I never want to talk to him again in okay. my life. Okay. Okay. I think I can put two and two together there, Speezy. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm picking up what you're saying there. So, uh, so obviously, you know, Frederick being your uh, replacement, it doesn't sound like there's any hard feelings there, though, correct? No, 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 no uh, not at all. Uh, so it's like, uh, I know Frederick uh, from before, so he was coming to shows, and, yeah, um, and, uh, yeah now, now he's in Creator. It's like, uh, there's no hard feelings or hate or something. It's like, uh, I remember his face uh, the first time when we met after he was in Creator. Yeah. So it was like his face was like a, a little bit shy or yeah. when when's the right word. And yeah. I was talking to him and, and I was like, hey, come on, just give me a goddamn fucking break. When yeah. you get an op uh, opportunity to play in a band like this, right. no one will say, oh, no, I don't I, I don't want to do it. So right. I know the uh, the, um, the bass player uh, from before. Right, like, right. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of almost like when Jason Newstead gets to call to join Metallica and like it and you know, Flotsam and Jetsam had just put out uh, Doomsday for the Deceiver, which was a very highly regarded album. And then he just, you know, I mean, but how do you pass up going to Metallica? You know what I mean? Like that's kind of a gig you gotta take, you know. I mean, like <laughs> exactly you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean so what was COVID like for you uh, uh, um, when everything was shut down? What was it like for you in terms of like, you know, being a creative person, you know what I mean? And, and then all of a sudden everything is locked down and you're not able to get out there and you're not able to play shows uh, and, and, and interact the way we're used to interacting. What was that period like for you? How did you spend that quarantine time? Did you write music? Did you just relax? What was it like for you? Well, it's like uh, in the quarantine, there was uh, four. Yeah. So we did uh, the four stuff, and uh, I was pretty busy uh, over here um, to sell the CDs, the records, merchandise, and everything. Yeah. And did all, almost ninety nine percent of all the interviews for four. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the rest of the time I was spending uh, with my two boys. Yeah. Yeah. Quality and, time. Yeah. What else yeah. could you do, right? I mean, it, it was exactly. pretty. And now you're over in Germany, right? That's where you call home. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm curious to get your take as somebody that lives in Germany as to why it seems like the European audience is just so plugged into the metal scene. I'm and, and I'm I'm over here in the states. I'm not saying that the United States certainly doesn't love its metal, but it seems like all the great festivals, all the great, uh, you know, all the great, you know, big gatherings for heavy metal. All seem to all seem to be over in Europe. You know, as somebody that's played in front of both audiences, what is it about the European audience that just really seems to, you know, where where the the metal just seems to really resonate with them? Hmm. 
That is a good question. It's like, I mean, it uh, seems like you guys got a lot of great festivals. I mean, Vakin. Yes, you know, yes. Uh, we, we, we got uh, a million of festivals over yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's like, uh, but I never thought about it from this direction. So it's like, it was always like this. Yeah, it had, even, right. Even, even, uh, even in the, what was it, 80s, when, when everything was, uh, was getting down yeah. with metal, it was still good over here. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it it seems like it's really embraced over there in a in a different way. Yeah. And uh, I remember, uh, yeah, the cause for Contraria uh, when we, uh, when we did the U.S. tour. Uh, most of the time, yeah, the venues were really small, really empty, and I really remember the one night. Uh, we finished the show. We stood there up to the next morning, and the next morning, the post office guy was coming with the flyers. <laughs> and I told him, and I told him, hey, guy, the show was yesterday. Yeah, you're a little too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 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 what is the process like for Bonded? Uh, uh, is there new music coming from Bonded soon? um uh, at the moment not uh for the reason um there are two albums right now right and uh when uh, bonded never toured with those albums so it doesn't make sense to write a third one right now okay okay and you did not play on those albums correct uh i played um on the uh, first one one song okay uh with uh uh bobby from overkill he was singing okay. on the song and i was playing bass on the song yeah R uh, rest in violence okay yeah and and uh and so when you guys are sitting around or, or you know after you guys go out and tour uh you know and, and and get some exposure uh and get these albums out there and you do go back to write a new album what do you anticipate the collaborative process to be like uh uh for bonded do you expect to be part of the writing process uh is, is that going to be a collaborative effort between everybody in the band yes Yes. yes, it will. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because you know sometimes people come in with a lot of ideas, and it's kind of like you know their band, and they don't really open that door for everybody in the band. You know. So no, 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 no. It's like um, <clears throat> bonded. Uh, bonded are five people. Yeah. And all of the five people's uh, people got the same word to say. Okay. Okay. So Fair enough. The, the, the same pro, uh, uh, percent okay 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 and 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 uh um uh do, is there a timeline on when bonded would like to get a new album out or is that not even on anybody's mind right now <clears throat> it's a moment not i don't think that we'll start to do anything like uh to write new music uh this year maybe next year okay okay um so uh getting back to the you know to the actual music business uh when you put an album out nowadays because obviously you know the musical uh industry has changed so much oh, yeah. you know for back in the day with the streaming platforms and, and album sales not what they used to be uh so you know when you're in a band that's only got two albums out like bonded you know what direction does a band like that go in to you know, to kind of catapult themselves to the next level is it getting on a good tour? Is it writing an, a, a, you know, a, 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 an amazing album? Is it all of those things? You know, how do you get bonded up to that next level? I think it's like um, doing shows. Yeah. Yeah. Getting to out do, there and just, playing yeah, live. Yeah. Just, just to get the band known. That's, that's what I think. It's like, yeah. When, when you see it at home, it's like you can write 20 amazing albums. Yeah, and nobody will recognize you. Yeah, yeah. It's it, still it, it is uh, it is still live. Are you somebody that gets out and goes and sees a lot of live music yourself as a music fan? Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. It's and, like, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> and like uh, in our area where we are living, um, at least you can see. Every day a show from small bands and uh, 
for sure every day on a weekend festivals yeah yeah and, uh, yeah, and everything it's really close close in this area together yeah and 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 the music scene uh, you know the music scene in your particular area uh is very good yeah it is good yeah and even um even got tons of young bands yeah yeah so thrash metal is in good hands then yeah it is yeah that's good <laughs> that, that, that's good because uh uh you know it seems like in in i i don't know you know as as somebody that's been in the industry a long time uh uh do you ever get do you ever get guys in young bands coming up to you and asking you that question? You know how to how to propel their career forward. And what do you say to those kids? Quit. <laughs> no, it's like just 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 keep going and uh, do what you love. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't listen to the other guys that will tell you your music sucks. Yeah, yeah. it's like if you think this band sucks just listen to someone else or yeah go and do a better job by yourself yeah 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 that's good advice that is good advice so so i have to certainly ask for people that don't know and again this story could be out there as well but where do you get the nickname speezy from where's oh, that from, come? uh from my stepdad okay and 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 he called you that for what reason his name was Spees. Okay, 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 gotcha. Okay, yeah, so okay. Spz means the small one, the small one, really? yeah. It's like I'm, I, I was his son, so it's like, uh, actually, it would be like, uh, Spies Junior, okay, 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 yeah, okay. And 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 uh, I'm interested, uh, uh, when you got into thrash metal music, though, uh, do you remember, you know, when you wanted to play fast, extreme metal music, do you remember who the first bands were that really got you into that? Like, were you like a, a, like a Metallica fan? Uh, you know, like, what was the, sure. what, was the what was the band that, 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 that really got you, that really, that you re really put the bug in you to play thrash music? <clears throat> uh, all, of the, uh, all of the old bands, like Metallica, Slayer, or... Um, Exodus and sure uh, bands from over here like uh, yeah Creator um, Sodom uh, Destruction Assassin and yeah tall, uh, actually all of those bands. If we stack up our big four against Germany's big four, do you guys win? I think you do. <laughs> you know it's like that's. A, that's the same when that's you a say loaded question. that's a loaded question speed yeah that's not fair no, that's not no it's fair. like uh, uh <laughs> it is the same when you say oh this band sucks i love this band yeah and i always looked at it like i always looked at it like metallica uh uh you know if you were comparing the two big fours i felt like metallica was creator destruction was megadeth sodom was slayer and tankard was anthrax yes yeah. you can you could you can name it like this yes i feel like creator was pretty much the uh you know i feel like you, you know creator really set the bar high not that those other german thrash metal bands are not fantastic but creator set a very high bar with just some amazing uh, you know i've been on here before and i've rated you know the, the albums that i think are the greatest thrash metal albums of all time and i always have extreme aggression in there which is just one of my personal favorites i know you weren't on that album and that was before you came into the band but when you look back at when you look back at creators catalog before you joined the band what's your, you know what's your assessment of of that stuff that they played before you came into the band oh uh. Because they had some amazing albums, Terrible Certainty, you know, uh, Endless yeah, for, uh, for, for, uh, for me, it's like, uh, uh, <clears throat> so it's like my old rehearsal room was directly next to Creator's rehearsal room. So yeah. I know it, uh, everything. And uh, for me, the, the best record, not not the best, but, but, but for me, I will always pick Come of Souls. Com yeah, yeah, yeah. And even it's like uh, back then, and all the media press stuff uh, when uh, creator did uh, renewal everybody was on their asses like oh 
that sucks with the electro uh, uh, drum in there and the electro noise and everything. And a half year later, uh, Machine Head and all the other bands did it. And it was like, wow, what an innovation. And I was yeah. like, you know, got them cocksuckers out there. <laughs> when Creator did it, it was totally bullshit. It was wrong. Yeah. Now everybody else is doing it and it's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and and, and, there, was, and you make that, it... there was a situation like, oh, those are just the dudes from Essen, Alten Essen from yeah. Germany. Yeah, put some respect on their damn name, god damn it. That's yeah. fucking creator for God fucking sake. So yeah, but I'm I'm interested that you said that because that must be tough for a for a, a musical artist because and I just talked about this with another guest I had on. You know, it's like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. If you put out the same album all the time, you know, you get flack for putting out the same goddamn thing all the time. And then when you tweak or change your sound, then you then there's a big backlash from your fans. Like the minute Metallica <laughs> writes a ballad, suddenly everybody is shitting all over them. Like people just want Master of Puppets over and over and over again, you know? So yeah. it, it's, it's really got to be very difficult to be an artist. You know, you almost can't listen to the fans. You, know, you can't. Like, uh, you know, it's like uh, for Creator, uh, everybody's saying, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pleasure to kill, pleasure to kill, pleasure to kill, pleasure to kill. Write another album like Pleasure to Kill. Right. With the sound from Pleasure to Kill. It's like, hey, dudes, yeah. fair enough. If you if you love Pleasure to Kill so much, go and buy the thirtieth album and put it um, and put it somewhere. Yeah. And buy the shirts. Oh, you got already a hundred of Pleasure to Kill shirts? Yeah, <laughs> just just go ahead, buy another one. <laughs> yeah, it's helping, it's helping everybody out financially. <laughs> just keep buying the stuff and keep playing Pleasure to Kill every single day, right? <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Just go ahead, feel free. Now, I, now I, I would be remiss if I didn't point out the fact that you are smoking. What are we smoking over there, Speezy? I don't know. Yeah. It's a cigarillo. A cigaretto. Okay, okay, okay. So not okay. So not weed. No, I don't smoke weed. You don't smoke weed. Okay, but no. I'm interested though as to what because obviously things have gotten much more lenient over here in the United States when it comes to our <laughs> weed smoking laws. What's it like over in Germany? Uh, yeah, they strict? start. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not strict. Uh, they start the same uh, right now, uh, like uh, like in the U.S. Yeah. And uh, they are talking about it's like 10 years already. And uh, I think back then, the, uh, the biggest problem for our government was like, they didn't know how to put tax on it. Right, right. And right. now, Make money off and, it. Right. <laughs> and, and, and now they know how to put tax on it. So they want to um, totally legalize it. Yeah. But uh, even when I was younger, uh, when you get get uh, catch by police with like three grams or five grams, there was like, you know what? Just go, just walk away. Yeah, yeah. It was not like, uh, oh, now you're going to jail. It was like, no, just it, it is just weed or hash. It's like just let him go. Yeah, yeah. So I'm eager to I'm eager to wonder now as you've gotten older. And you mentioned that you have children of your own, you know, as your focus changes in life and different things come into your world that change, you know, the different responsibilities, does that affect how you approach touring nowadays? You know, do you like to go away for a long tour now and leave the family behind? Or do you like to go out for a shorter time now? You know, it's like, uh, back then, uh, when I was, uh, was created on tour with it, in a year, a hundred, hundred shows, hundred sixty shows, or something right. like this. Of course, uh, you are on tour, on the road. You miss the family at home, and uh, the family miss you. You're calling them every goddamn fucking day, yeah. and everything is fine. Yeah. And uh, soon as I was home, uh, I was home, and did nothing. My wife was always like, after a week, maybe. A week and a half, she was asking me, it's like, when did you leave again? <laughs> <laughs> I know, they always want to get rid of us, Beezy. You know? They yeah. always want to get rid of us. 
<laughs> I and I can certainly relate. I've been married for 25 years too. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, certainly absence makes the heart grow fonder. You know what I mean? It is nice to have some time away once in a while, but uh, but you know, but, but that is certainly a lot of traveling. And 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 obviously, creator, you, you, you know, used to put on some uh, uh, just uh, you know, and I I never got to see creator live, uh, and still haven't to this day. But you know, just watching videos and stuff on YouTube. Obviously, uh, you know, just a huge production and just a, a super entertaining stage show. But do you feel like you need to you feel like you need to change your routine now as you get older? Is touring does touring take more of a toll on your body? And and if it does, what kind of personal changes do you make? No, actually, it, uh, it doesn't. I was like, um, uh, yeah, I, I saw it right now uh, when the Overkill guys asked me. Yeah, I did the seven shows with them, and uh, that was just for me, like, like normal. Just like, yeah, just like normal. It's like. So you're I'm, not doing any extra stretching. You're not bringing any extra Tylenol with you. You don't have any aches and pains. <laughs> Everything's mm -hmm. holding up pretty good. <laughs> uh, the only thing what uh, what I do at my daytime is like uh, smoking. Yeah, and coffee coffee yeah and yeah. and and i you know i certainly wouldn't feel really great as a nurse because my day job here in, in in the united states i i work in healthcare as a nurse so you you, you know as a fan of yours speezy i must tell you the smoking is not so good for you though but you know I that know. already <laughs> i know that already yes but it's like I, uh um it, it it is not a joke it is really not a joke everybody no. No, it's like uh, everybody's like, uh, you're kidding. It's like, no, I'm not. So it's like um, uh, back then, my uncle, he's seven years older than me. Yeah. And um, he starts to smoke back then. And uh, I was six. And I told him, I want a cigarette. And he was like, no, you're too young. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, uh, 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 to my grandma and we'll tell her that you're smoking right now. Whoa. Yeah. So, that's when I got my first cigarette with six and I now wow. smoking and I'm turning 53 this year. Well, I, you know, I can't really cast a stone because, I, you know, I did smoke a pack a day for a lot of years. I have been quit now for a lot of years, uh, but, but I do still enjoy I do still enjoy smoking weed, though. And I don't necessarily know that that's any better because you are still ingesting smoke. I mean, you know, exactly. it's, it's certainly a polarizing topic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know that the human body is really invented to ingest smoke on any level. You know, I mean, yeah. who knows? You know, I mean, I just found out. At, I just found out at work. They just told me today, actually, uh, that the Center for Disease Control here in the United States just told our healthcare facility to get rid of all of the vaccines from Pfizer. Johnson and Johnson and Moderna, all the vaccine stuff, because the CDC has deemed it unhealthy. So now we've gotten these vaccines and we don't even know what the fuck they put in us now. And now they're recalling it all. Yeah, that's uh, that's the reason why I'm not did this. Yeah. So you didn't get vaccinated? No. And did you end up getting COVID at all or no? Uh, I have no idea. Right. Because uh, right, nowadays... I'm, I'm, well, then nowadays, if you get sick, you, 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 you know, it's like COVID is so similar to the flu that you might not even know, you know, yeah. I did. Uh, I did a couple of tests and uh, they were uh, they were always uh, negative. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, I was told um, I was not against it. So I'm vaccinated for uh for South America and when we were in Malaysia and stuff right. like this with right. the yellow fever stuff and 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 all of those stuff. But with the COVID vaccination stuff, our government was like, no, you have to do it and blah, blah. And I was like, uh, excuse me, you don't even test those stuff for years. Right, right. It's just appeared and uh, it is safe. No, I, I don't think so. It's safe. Right. Right. Yeah, that's true. And, yeah, uh, I know. And, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, like, like, like we can't cure any of this other stuff, 
but suddenly we've got a we've got a vaccine for this thing in a matter of months. You know that it's it seems yeah. a little fishy. We can't cure cancer. We can't cure all this other stuff. But we came up with you know this vet this virus comes out of nowhere and suddenly we can we can get into a a, a laboratory and come up with a cure for it in in, in a short time. It it, yeah. it, it 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 does smell a little on the fishy side. Yeah, I don't exactly. know. But so so getting back to the overkill shows that you did. Uh, uh, when you're out with Overkill, how much of their new album are they playing right now? Because their new album is fucking fantastic. Oh, I love the new album. It's like, yeah. uh, uh, and uh, in the live set, uh, there are three songs at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what's the reaction like when the crowd comes out? In Because uh, I saw some of the YouTube videos <laughs> of the shows. And obviously people are in the comment section and they're saying, where the fuck is Dee Dee? You know what I mean? I, I, I don't think anybody wasn't happy to see you. I think they were just a little bit perplexed as to where Dee Dee is because he's so he, he's such a, a main component of that band. But what, uh, was the, but what was the crowd reaction like? Um... The reaction uh, was pretty good, and of course, everybody was like, uh, "Where's Diddy? Where's right. Diddy? Where's Diddy?" So Diddy, Diddy is overkill, and Bobby, right? And um, uh, but everybody knows me from Creator. Yeah, you've got the so pedigree. Like, yeah, and uh, yeah, everybody was happy. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that like, it would be. Yeah, and Overkill's yeah. Overkill's one of those bands too, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. They are like twenty fucking albums into their career, and they're another band that just doesn't get the credit that they deserve. They have been so fucking consistent in their career. Yeah. Every fucking album just seems to get better and better and better, and heavier, yeah. and just and just more of a refined sound. Like those guys just have seemed to have found the fountain of fucking youth. They just don't age. I just, it's like uh, I have no idea why Overkill stuck on this level. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, uh, for me, it's like yeah, they are they are a part of the big four. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and so is Exodus, and so is Testament and Death Angel. There's really a lot of bands that really belong in there. I think it should certainly be expanded. And if they were ever to go out on tour again. You know, maybe make it like an all day like uh thrash type festival because a lot of those other bands are 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 every bit as important to the thrash metal scene as as the big four are. Yeah. I mean it's it, like, it, it is it, it is yeah, it is crazy. It's like why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those bands. I mean, you, you know, I, I, for, for me personally, when I think of the word thrash metal. And somebody wants to, and, and somebody wants clarification on what thrash metal should sound like. I always point to Overkill and Exodus in Creator because I, I feel like those are really like the blueprint for what I hear in my head when somebody says thrash music. You know, I mean, yeah, was well, uh, I? Uh, I know exactly what you mean. It's like trash. Uh, the trash what you mean. It's like uh, still the raw stuff with a yeah. punk attitude inside. Yes, very much a punk attitude. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, what is the big game plan here uh, with Bonded? Like, where would you like to see Bonded in two years, five years? Where would you like to see them? And what do you think the potential is for this band? Uh, well, I want to see the band. I hope so. We are all still alive in two or five <laughs> years. Yeah, let's start there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, I have no idea. We will see. Yeah, the only time. It's like uh, uh, now, we got so much offers for shows and festivals. We got a couple of shows uh, coming up uh, this year, and uh, already uh, we're being asked for festivals uh, for next year. So it's like I have no idea where we are going. And Maybe. and uh, and. Uh, and so you want to go out right now and really focus on really going out and playing those first two albums and really getting some exposure for those albums. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And 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 what has been the what has been the crowd reaction to Bonded when you do go out and play? Um, so far it's amazing. We yeah. did um, um, we did one show in Osnabrück. Uh, so it's like um, Bobby and Diddy uh, invite us for. Um, playing as uh, support yeah and uh it was amazing for us yeah yeah so, 
It sounds like you've got a great relationship with the Overkill guys. Are there oh, other yes. guys? Are there other guys in that thrash metal music scene that you've really bonded with and made good friends with, uh, other than Bobby and the guys in Overkill? Yeah, uh, for sure. Sodom and uh, yeah, all, all all the German trash bands. Sure, sure. And uh, yeah, in the states is uh, Death Angel Exodus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great bands, great bands. And yeah. and and the funny thing is, I went last year to see the Bay Area Strikes Back tour, and those bands are just, you know, you would never know that those bands are 30 plus years into their career. It, you know, they're all just so amazing. Even the guys in Exodus, I mean, Testament, you know, those bands are just, you know, it, it really feels good being 50 years old myself to see the bands that I grew up with still kicking ass and doing so, you know, and, and doing so well and really, you know, and really laying down the blueprint for, you know, for the younger bands. Yeah, I think um, the reason for it is like uh, we stop thinking about uh, just getting older. Yeah. We don't want to get old. Right. Who the hell does? I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening, though, Speezy. It's happening. Yeah, but, uh, but you know, it's like uh, when I see some friends from school, yeah uh they are really looks uh, look old yeah <laughs> and it's like oh my back hurts and this and oh i have to wash my car and yeah and for yeah. us um we did our whole life the same shit music yep yeah. yeah. um flew around the world a couple of times and we're still young yeah. You know, our brain. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the way you got to think, I think. How about your kids? Uh, what do your kids feel about your music? Are your kids at all musical themselves? Um, some Sometimes, uh, you see behind, uh, I got a drum here. Yep, yep. So, uh, I, um, I got my drum here. I got uh, tons of basses here. I got some guitars laying around here. And... Uh, I just told them, if you want to play it, just go ahead, play it, yeah. yeah, have fun. If you want to know something, then I can teach you. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not this person uh, to tell my sons, it's like, yeah, come on, you have to play as a guitar or the bass or drum right. or whatever. It's like, no, just, they are kids. Right. You know, it's like, maybe one day they, um, they want to, play music so then i will help them out if they're not it's okay uh, it's also cool for me what do they think about your music that you've created are they fans of it uh yes they like it yeah 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 so you've done a good job raising some thrash metal kids <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's so much crappy music out there, man. I mean, you know, certainly lots of good music, but there's also just a lot of crap out there. And it's so hard to sift through it all nowadays because it seems like the attention span of people in the world has really dwindled down and and people are just so busy and being pulled in a million different directions that when they have time to sit down and listen to music, it's very hard for them to pick and choose like what they want to listen to. And I think they fall back a lot on their old favorites, you know, instead of going out and exploring new music. Yeah. And that's exactly. a problem. You know, that's a problem. Yeah. If you're trying to get, if you're trying to start a career in music, like right now, it'd probably be very difficult to be a brand new musician. I would imagine. It depends uh, from which area you are, <laughs> yeah, which area, which genre you're going into. Yeah. Right. And, right. Right. Exactly. So it's like uh, I went uh, at the weekend uh, to a small festival over here. Yeah, and there were just just new bands, and uh, yeah, the only two old bands w was Assassin. Maybe you know them. Yep, sure. And uh, Russell Boss. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, go ahead. Go ahead. And all the other bands uh, was just local. Uh, small bands with young uh, with young boys, and and uh, 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 now settle this debate for me: Is the best beer uh, German beer? I have no idea. No, no, it's like uh, I just drink beer. Yeah, uh, so I don't drink hard liquor anymore. 
I stopped it like 10 years ago or 12 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I just review. But I have no idea. It's, uh, it's German. It's the best beer. It's like uh, the only thing uh, what we got over here, it's like uh, the, brew, uh, the brewing uh, law. Okay. So a beer has to has to be like this like especially uh, special education uh yeah. is on there so yeah. you don't can uh you don't can brew a beer with this stuff and that stuff and that stuff and call it a beer it's like no it has to be in germany hopfen malz and water and something else so they take it seriously yeah they yeah, seriously. yeah 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 they, they, take, they take it really them. seriously yeah so so getting back to bonded uh, uh if people want to go listen to these first two albums you guys are out there on all the streaming platforms i take it yes yes we are yes and and obviously bonded probably has a facebook a website all that good shit. if people want to find yes. out more about yes, Bonded, we do. and uh the two records uh were uh at um century media okay yeah century media and uh i think now it's uh central media it's like who who bought them roadrunner or yeah BMC? i think so yeah, yeah. i think it's i i i, I want to say roadrunner i don't know if that's actually uh correct yeah. or not but but it sounds like it's correct yeah i i, I also think it, uh is uh, roadrunner well i wish you a lot of luck with it man and i really appreciate you coming on here and taking the time to get your shit sorted out i, I know we talked earlier in the day and this was turning into a big fucking problem with the goddamn google meet thank god technology <laughs> thank god technology is making everything so fucking easy for us i mean you know it's yeah. supposed to be it's supposed to be simple and then sometimes it's not i came home and got on my computer and i wasn't even getting an internet connection up until about five minutes before we started talking and i was i was pulling my fucking hair out it was driving me crazy i was like I, you know, this is a pain in the ass. I thought technology is supposed to be getting better and making the world easier. Sometimes it's not. Like, but uh, like we wrote today, it's like how much, how much um, times, ten times, I, uh, I was changing the password, and every time when I, every every time, when I try to connect, it was like, oh, wrong password. It's like, yeah, yeah. It, it's like you're kidding me. It's like I know. I I, I, I changed it two minutes ago. I know. I know. And, and 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 it's still wrong. Yeah, I know. Well, listen, I really appreciate you doing this, man. I encourage everyone to go out and check out those first two Bonded albums. And I'm going to tell you flat out, buddy, I really miss you in Creator. I really do, man. I, I You know, uh, the work you did there, man, will not be forgotten, man. Uh, you know, you put in 25 great years in some amazing thrash metal music you delivered upon the world, man. So, you know, we are indebted to you, man. So thank you for a lot of great music. And it's unfortunate the situation that you're not in the band anymore, but you left us with so much great great fucking metal man that you know i mean you know we'll always have the music you know yeah and that means only, a lot yeah the only thing what i can say it's like uh thank all of you guys out there yeah. to make it happen yeah like uh yeah some musicians when i see them live they just forget without uh without you guys coming to the shows buying the records shirts and everything there will be no band. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. In closing, what do you think when you, I, I just want to ask you just uh, as a live musician yourself, uh, like what's your opinion when you see these bands on YouTube that are using like backing tracks and kind of using these little cheats to make their sound better? Do you like that? Or do you think bands ought to really be delivering the goods live? That is also a good question. It's like, uh, I'm not a fan of backing tracks not at yeah. all it's like uh just just do your homework and practice practice the songs and if you don't can play the songs in the studio just try to make it a little bit easier yeah improvise exactly and so I, I i'm i'm not a, a fan of backing tracks it's like why yeah the, the only thing um the only thing um what I really like is uh, uh, when a drummer uh, got in ears and he's playing to a click. Yeah. So it's like, it is so easy then to follow the songs. Right, right. Not like, uh, it's like, 
sometimes you get a drama it's like um yeah you when you got a, a amazing response from the audience he's playing faster and faster and faster and faster yeah yeah <laughs> and, and 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 yeah and everybody in front of the stage uh on stage you start to suffer it's like most of the time when it is a, when when it is an easy riff the drummer will play slow and easy yeah and when you got some uh, something like do 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 over the sudden the drummer is playing like it's like fuck you yeah you're damned if you do damned if you don't again yeah and that's uh that um that's why i really like uh when a drummer is playing to a click yeah it helps it so keeps everything in time yeah. yeah the consistency and everything it's in time and uh yeah and that's not cheating for me it's yeah. just like you're playing to a click to a metronome it's like right right yeah. right yeah well listen i certainly want to thank you again for all the great creator music I, I i think i speak on behalf of a lot of creator fans who genuinely really really miss you in that band and uh but but certainly happy as hell that you're doing shit with bonded and uh i'm looking forward to new music from them i'm gonna go back and really dig into the old albums man and uh i'm just a fan of you and i just uh, you know i wish you all the best with everything going forward and Hopefully we can keep in touch, and when uh, yes, sure. and, and when something's going on, we'll get on here and we'll do it again. Yeah, sure. Yeah, one hundred percent. I really, really enjoy talking with you, Speezy. I really appreciate it. Yeah, the only thing what I can say is thank you for having me. Uh, absolutely, it's been a pleasure and an honor getting the chance to talk to you, man. And uh, I, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So thank you, man, and uh, I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Bye. All right. Thanks, Speezy. Take it easy, buddy. Yeah. Bye. All right. Later. Folks, what can I say? That's a legend. That is Christian Speezy Geisler. You knew him from his 25 fucking year run in German thrash metal legends creator. That's right. Giving us fucking great albums from 1995 all the way up until his departure from the band in 2019. Uh, Jesus, man. All the way from 1995's Cause of Conflict or cause for conflict, excuse me, all the way up on through. And then these last couple of albums, I mean, the last one he was on was Gods of Violence. Uh, before that, Phantom Antichrist, uh, Enemy of God. I mean, he was on some real fucking bangers. And now he's doing his thing out there with uh, Bonded. Uh, as, it, as you can hear, uh, things didn't end so great with Creator, but he left us with a lot of fucking great music. I mean... Enough said. I mean, Creator sets the bar very high. That is pure thrash metal music. Uh, no matter what part of the world it's from, German, the United States, otherwise, Creator is just damn good thrash metal music. Don't know if it will maintain its greatness. That remains to be seen without Speezy in there holding it down on the bass, on the low end. Love the guy, man. But do go check out Bonded. That is the, uh, that is the German thrash metal band that he is in now. Uh, hasn't uh, uh, put, actually been on a full album with them yet, as you heard, but uh, things will soon be in the works. They will be out playing, hopefully come and do a, uh, a uh, venue near you. So go check them out. Give Speezy a lot of love and a lot of support. You just heard he was out there on the road filling in for the great Dee Dee Verney uh, and doing some shows with Overkill. So, uh the guy's a legend. What more can I fucking say? I really appreciate him being on here with me, man. And uh, a real honor. I, you know, I'm like the United Nations of podcasting. I bring you people from all over the world. Speezy was in Germany. Uh, I got an interview coming up with somebody in Australia. I've had guys on from death metal bands in Sweden. I reach out to the people. I'm bringing nations together. Just remember, Podscum is bringing nations together. Keep that in mind, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed that fucking episode as much as I did. And that was an honor talking to Speezy. And let me remind you, until we get together and do this fucking thing again, to take it easy and keep it sleazy.